As you can see, forklifts are not toys. When used safely, they save you time and make your job much easier. This program is simply a review of safe operating rules. First of all, anyone operating this equipment must be trained and authorized by the company. Your license means you have received training and are capable of safely operating this equipment. Once you're trained and authorized, the rest is up to you. You're expected to have the maturity and responsibility to operate this equipment efficiently and safely. Don't take this responsibility lightly. A forklift professional doesn't cause property damage or injuries. Everyone wants to move material efficiently and quickly, and that's your job. But you don't have to speed or violate safety rules to do a good job. We realize equipment operators get in a hurry, especially if you're sitting on a forklift all day, but how much time and money do you save by spilling loads, running into doors, walls, sprinkler pipes, or other materials? The time you save by speeding and cutting corners isn't worth one minor accident. You're much more productive working safely and obeying the rules. All we ask is for you to perform your job professionally. Let's review a few engineering principles so you'll have the knowledge to make your own decisions and exercise good judgment. Forklift equipment operates on the fulcrum principle. Two weights are balanced by a fulcrum. The counterweight, or engine and heavy metal parts, counterbalance the weight of the load. The fulcrum point is your front tires. The data plate attached to your forklift provides the serial and model numbers, and it also tells you how much weight you can safely lift and how high the forks can be raised. Generally, the data plate shows three different lifting capacities. Each of these capacities are determined by the load center. A 5,000-pound capacity at a 24-inch load center means you can safely lift a load weighing 5,000 pounds if the load center is 24 inches. You can safely raise this 5,000-pound load to the maximum height listed on the data plate if the mast remains in the vertical position. The load center is the distance measured from the center of the load to the vertical face of the forks. On a standard 48-inch by 48-inch pallet, an evenly distributed load would have a 24-inch load center. If you go back to the data plate, you'll see other capacities based upon a 36-inch and 42-inch load center. If your forklift is rated at 5,000 pounds with a 24-inch load center, it may read 4,000 pounds at a 36-inch load center. You can quickly tell a longer load center decreases the lifting capacity. A 42-inch load center may decrease the lifting capacity to 3,000 pounds. You must know the load center of your load to determine the safe lifting capacity. If you're not sure, ask your supervisor for assistance. Remember, when we stated all these capacities, it included keeping the mast in a vertical position when lifting. If you tilt your load when it's raised, you're changing the load center. If you have a maximum capacity load on your forklift and you tilt the load, the forklift may become overloaded and tip over. There's another engineering principle that's important to keep in mind. Your forklift's center of gravity is somewhere towards the rear of the vehicle. This center of gravity shifts towards the forks as the load is raised. Forklift manufacturers take the shifting of the center of gravity principle into account when they determine the lifting capacity of the vehicle. Operators should also understand this principle because you may lift over capacity loads and when you try to raise the load, the shifting center of gravity may cause the forklift to overturn. Let's not forget how much the lifting mast weighs also. If you try to tilt a raised load, the weight of the mast, the load, and the shifted center of gravity can become an accident. Forklifts have high centers of gravity and a narrow wheelbase. This means you must operate the equipment slowly and not speed or make fast turns. The center of gravity could shift to one side and cause your forklift to overturn. Forklifts are engineered to provide safe, efficient operation. However, accidents and injuries occur when operators fail to understand these principles or when they fail to follow the safe operating rules. Let's look at the stability triangle of the forklift which is created by the front tires forming a triangle to the center of the rear axle. Forklifts are engineered on the three-point suspension system. The first two points are the front tires, and the third point is the pivot pin on the rear axle. The pivot pin helps the rear wheels move up and down as the rear tires move over bumps or uneven surfaces. 
The center of gravity must always remain inside this triangle or the forklift will overturn. If you raise a load, the center of gravity shifts toward the front tires. If you make a fast, sharp turn, the center of gravity shifts toward the side. If you have a raised load and tilt the forks back, the center of gravity shifts toward the rear of the triangle. Tilting forward shifts the center of gravity toward the front. Overloading your vehicle shifts the center of gravity towards the front too. The forklift will overturn if the center of gravity exceeds the lines of the triangle. These principles aren't difficult to understand or learn, but they emphasize the point that forklifts do have speed, weight, and load limitations. It's your job to operate the equipment according to the design and manufacture of the forklift. Okay, let's take a quick review of some of the safe operating rules of the equipment. You have the responsibility to practice these rules when operating forklift equipment. Before you are permitted to operate forklift equipment, you must be trained and authorized by your company, regardless of your past operating experience. Never operate unsafe equipment. In a few minutes, we'll discuss operator maintenance and when a vehicle is unsafe to operate. When operating forklifts, give your full undivided attention to the job and don't smoke, eat, or drink while operating lift equipment. Riders are never permitted on any forklift at any time. You may have seen persons being raised while standing on the forks. This is a serious safety violation and is never permitted. If you must elevate a person on a forklift, the safe method is to have an approved safety platform attached to the forks and secured to the vehicle. This safety platform must have an adequate floor on which to stand. It must have 42-inch guardrails and center rails. A 7-foot high guard must also be installed to protect the person in the platform from getting hands or arms caught in the moving mast. Additionally, the forklift operator must remain at the controls when anyone is lifted on the platform. We've already discussed speeding, but it's worth mentioning again. Speeding with the forklift can only result in accidents, damaged material, spilled loads or injuries. You're much more productive when you operate your equipment at a safe speed and not try and cut corners by speeding. When you're moving a load, the forks should be raised about four to six inches off the floor. Never drive your forklift with a raised load. In tight spaces, watch the forks and the rear end swing. The heavy rear of the forklift can easily damage storage racks, walls, doors, and other areas. Be particularly careful when maneuvering in congested or tight spaces. When carrying a load, lift the load about four to six inches off the floor and tilt the mast back slightly to stabilize the load. The load resting on the mast will prevent the load from moving or falling. If the load is high and blocks your vision, drive in reverse. While driving, keep your arms, head, and legs inside the vehicle. When driving around blind corners, honk your horn to let others know you're coming through. Never drive your forklift up to someone standing nearby. Use extra caution around pedestrians as they may not be paying attention. It is your job to watch where you're driving and to anticipate the unexpected. Of course, don't allow anyone to walk under raised loads. Parking your forklift out of the way and not causing it to be a hazard is simple. Lower the forks to the floor with the mast in the vertical position. Set your parking brake. If you're going to be off the forklift for a short time, you can keep the motor running. If you're going to be more than 25 feet away from the vehicle, turn the motor off. Removing the key is recommended, but check with your supervisor for your company's rule for removing the key. Forklifts are efficient material movers. Let's review some basic safety rules while loading or unloading trucks and trailers. Stay away from the edge of the loading docks. Give yourself plenty of space for safety. As you can see, this forklift operator got too close to the edge and the forklift landed on the dock outside. Before you move onto trailers or trucks, make sure the brakes are set and the wheels are chalked. Don't drive onto trucks or trailers unless the wheels are chalked. If the trailer is separated from the truck, use a stabilizing jack to prevent the trailer from tipping over when you drive your forklift inside the trailer. The weight of the material inside and the forklift can cause a serious accident. 
Dock plates are used to provide a smooth surface when crossing between the dock and trailer. Make sure the dock plate is in good condition and is properly placed between the trailer and the dock to prevent movement of the dock plate. Make sure you have adequate lighting to see where you're going. Of course, make sure the truck or trailer floor is safe to drive your forklift inside. When driving up or down a ramp, always keep the load upgrade with the load cradled against the mast. The rule on ramps is simple. Drive up, back down. You're beginning to see how simple these rules are and how easy it is to become a safe and efficient forklift operator. Safety rules are made and enforced to protect the operator and those persons working around forklifts. As part of your professional responsibilities, each forklift operator must inspect and perform operator maintenance on your forklift at the beginning and end of your shift. Make it a habit to check your vehicle every day, even if someone else has been using it. First, let's outline the basics of when a forklift is unsafe to operate. If your vehicle's brakes, horn, parking brake, or steering is defective, then it's unsafe to operate. If there are leaks in the fuel, oil, hydraulic, or transmission, it may be unsafe to operate. When you spot a leak, that's the time to notify your supervisor to have it checked by a mechanic. Naturally, always check your oil, water, and battery for proper fluid levels. Check hydraulic and transmission fluid levels. If you're operating an electric-powered forklift, make sure the battery is sufficiently charged before operating. When you're checking the brakes, test the brakes. If they feel spongy or go too far toward the floor, report it to your supervisor. To test the parking brake, start the motor, engage the brake, put the transmission in a forward gear, and see if the brake holds. If not, it needs adjusting or repair. Test the steering. Excessive play in the steering wheel is when the steering wheel moves two to three inches before the rear tires begin to turn. Inspect the heel of the forks for cracks. This is where all the force and pressure of the load is exerted and cracks can lead to breakage of the forks. Raise your forks about three to four inches off the ground. Make sure both lifting chains have equal tension. If one is too loose, it could cause a load to shift and fall. When refueling or charging batteries, the motor must be shut off. Electric forklifts must have the key in the off position. If you use LP gas, protect your hands with gloves. LP gas is very cold and can cause severe burns. Of course, use eye protection when refueling LP gas tanks or charging batteries and follow the no smoking rule when refueling any vehicle. Follow your company's rules and the instructions provided by the manufacturer when charging batteries. The first step is to use protective equipment and make sure the charger is turned off. Never smoke or create sparks near batteries as hydrogen gas is highly flammable. Disconnect the power cable and connect the charger to the batteries. Make sure the water level is sufficient. Leave the vent caps on the battery then turn on the charger. Make sure you have plenty of ventilation as batteries get quite hot when charged. After charging the battery, allow it to cool two to three hours before using the battery if at all possible. Again, we're using common sense and standard safety rules for protection. Your company may have additional safety rules, so it's always best to learn and follow published safety rules. Follow the manufacturer's instructions. Operator maintenance is your responsibility if you feel your forklift is unsafe to operate, always report it to your supervisor. Well, that's about it. Nothing exotic, no hidden secrets. Basic safety and common sense. The most important part of any safety program is you. If you have a professional attitude, safety will be part of your job. Thanks for listening and watching. Keep up the good work and take safety home with you when you finish the day's work. Thank you.